Can I invite the kids up? I have a little song and a great little story for you. So the, the story in the gospel, that's the story of Zacchaeus. And it's a neat little story. And you guys would appreciate this. Zacchaeus, this, he was really wealthy, really important guy. But he was short, you know, like, kind of like me. Did you, um, yesterday, Friday, I was here with the bishop. You know, the bishop is crazy, crazy tall, and I'm crazy, crazy short. And so I got a chance to feel like Zacchaeus because he wanted to see Jesus and he couldn't do it. You've been to a parade where you can't see because all the adults in front of you, dad ever put you up on their shoulders or something? Well, Zacchaeus didn't have anybody to help him. He got this really crazy idea. So he ran down the street ahead where there was no crowd, and he went up into a sycamore tree, climbed a tree, and he's sitting up in the tree. He's going to watch as Jesus comes by, and Jesus does come by. And then something really amazing happens. Jesus sees him. You know, you wouldn't think that Jesus would notice, but he does, and he calls him. He says, Zacchaeus, come on down. Come on down. I want to go to your house. And they spend some time together. And the really neat thing about it, Zacchaeus isn't really a nice guy at the beginning of the story, but at the end of the story, he, he repents and he's like, okay, I'm going to do better. That's the story of Zacchaeus. And, you know, I mean, there's lots of little things for you and I. It's just a great reminder that we need to be with Jesus. We're going to do anything we can to be with Jesus. Come to Mass, read our Bibles, pray, that sort of stuff. And that it pays off when you see Jesus. Things happen. So you may know this song. If you do, you can sing with me. But I need you to help me with one line, okay? I'm going to get to the point. I'm going to say, and Jesus said, and you're going to say, Zacchaeus, you come down. Can you do that? Zacchaeus, you come down. Now, you're going to have to do it a little louder because I've got a microphone and you don't, okay? Try it again. Zacchaeus, you come down. Okay, can you do that a little louder? They'll never hear you. Zacchaeus, you come down. Very good. Okay, so it goes like this. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked into the tree and he said, You come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. And the second verse tells the, the, the good part of the story. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a happy man was he. Sorry, I don't know this line. For he, for he had seen the Lord that day, and a happy man was he. And a happy man was he. Very good. You guys are great. Thanks so much. You want to you go back to your seats? It is a fun story, of course. Um, you know, it's just fun on lots of levels, you know, for us adults. But there are, there are two interesting little tidbits in there. Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. I don't know if you've thought about it. Why? Why does he want to see Jesus? Now, I mean, it could have been a lot of reasons, but I suspect because he knows something's missing in his life. Zacchaeus is a rich guy. He is the chief tax collector in a big city. Jericho at that point, at that time, was this big tr- sort of city of trade and commerce, lots of things to tax. And so he would have picked up a fair amount of money. So in our day and age, he would be the guy with the big house, a couple of cars. One of those cars would be a crazy, nice car. You know, he would have been able to go whatever vacations he wanted to go on. He's the guy that could have had somebody, you know, mow the yard, clean the swimming pool, all that stuff. Just rich. And, you know, we have a tendency to think that, you know, somebody who's rich, hey, they got it, they got it made. But Zacchaeus doesn't seem to think so. He's missing something in his life, and he knows it. Some of you will remember the story of the rich young ruler Come, this guy comes to Jesus. He is a rich, young ruler. He comes to Jesus, and he says to him, what do I have to do to have eternal life? And Because he knows, despite the fact that he's got all these advantages, something's missing out of his life. 
I think it's worth reminding ourselves, Zacchaeus is missing something out of his life, and he knows it. And then he decides he wants to see Jesus. This might help him. But then there's the second question. Well, how does he know that Jesus might help? It, uh, you wouldn't perhaps know the geography. Jericho is down here in the south of Israel. Um, it's Jericho's to the east of Jerusalem. Jesus did most of his ministry up in the northern part, up in Galilee. How does Zacchaeus know about Jesus? Now, it's possible Jesus had, had passed through there at uh, other points, but more than likely, it's probably because someone told Zacchaeus about Jesus. And probably didn't tell him a lot, you know, just probably said, you know, hey, I, I saw this guy, he preached, and he preaches with authority, and really made a lot of sense, and he did some miracles, I don't know, you know, something like that, just sort of told him a few things. It was just enough to get Zacchaeus to put two things together. I'm missing something out of my life despite all my advantages, and I think this guy can help. Just wondering if you could bring that up to the 21st century and realize that isn't that all still true? You know, all those people that were in Festival Lane a couple weeks ago, those thousands of people, um, you know, they're all missing something out of their lives. All of us are. That's, a, that's a, a, a thing that's true of all humanity. We're missing something that only God can provide. Now, I will admit to you, if you asked a typical person out on Festival Lane, especially when they're having a good time in a, at a festival at a carnival, and you say to them, so how you doing? They'd probably say, oh, I'm doing fine. This is great. I'm having a good time. Because people that are missing something out of their life, missing God out of their life, they cover it up, you know, with fun and activities and sports and interest and work and, the, you know, money and buying stuff and, you know, the next tattoo, whatever it is, they, they find ways to cover it up. You know, the music in the ear helps a lot. You can just keep covering up the fact that every so often you sense something's not quite right. I'm chasing a dream, and I'm not sure that actually is going to be what I really want. So that, that's true of all those people, but then you have to ask yourself, well, are, are they going to be like Zacchaeus? Could they say to themselves, oh, I think this Jesus guy might help? Well, we encountered some people, you read those stories in the bulletin last week, where people who had had a background in church back, you know, just a little bit, they, they came to us and had some conversations and said, I think maybe I need to get back to church. Because they realize I'm missing something and maybe this thing I remember from my past might help. But there's a whole lot of people that were out on Festival Lane, they don't have a background in church. Parents didn't take them to church. They've never maybe been in a church. How are they going to know about Jesus? This is the point at which a few of you are going to get a little anxious because you know the next word I'm going to use is evangelization, and, and you don't like that word. I used to not be a big fan of the word myself, and that was because... I kept thinking that evangelization meant I had to do what I knew. I had some friends who literally would do this. They would stand, for example, in a, you know, in a checkout line at Walmart and just turn around to the person behind them and say, do you know Jesus? Or the better one, which I, yeah. Or they would say, if, if, if you die today, do you know if you're going to go to heaven? I, I could not begin to picture myself saying any of that stuff to anybody, a stranger. I mean, it was just it was not me. And if that's what evangelization was, even though I knew I was supposed to do it, I just couldn't imagine how I was ever going to fulfill this command of the Lord. But Zacchaeus, is a, this story would remind you that, you know, evangelization is that and way more possibilities. We all do have an obligation to evangelize. We do not all have an obligation to evangelize like that. We have to evangelize in whatever way we can. 
And I would suggest to you that, you know, there is no way that anybody went up to Zacchaeus and gave him a long theological thesis about faith. They didn't walk up to him and give him, you know, St. Aquinas' five proofs of God. They didn't do any of that stuff. All they ended up doing probably was just tell, hey, Zacchaeus, you know, I met this guy. I saw this guy. You know, just some little simple description. And I'm just wondering if that's within the possibility of many of us here. We do casually talk about things that we see and notice and like. You know, a, a show we saw, a movie we saw, and uh, something on the news. You know, we'll just bring it up in casual conversation. Is it not possible to bring up church in conversation? You know, someone says to you tomorrow, you know, how was your weekend? You know, you, know, you could say, oh, fine, I got a chance to watch some football. But could you not also say, you know, like, oh, no, it was fine, it was nice. You know, I got to church, watch some football. You know, that's just, that's just what you did. And, and who knows, maybe they ignore it, maybe they ask you a question about it, doesn't matter. Maybe slowly but surely by you referencing your faith that this is just part of what I do on a weekend, maybe it makes a difference. They, at some point, they'll ask. You know, they, they see you offer grace in a restaurant or you know, you're eating, you know, just a quiet grace, nothing showy or anything like that, but you just bow your head and offer a bit of thanks, you know, just showing your faith. There's you that are on social media. I mean, you know, like, you know, we, we tend to do, you know, let me take the selfie of me with a couple of people in a restaurant. Okay, well, that's nice. That's good. Could you, is it possible to take a selfie of you and a couple of people, you know, coming to church, leaving church? Or is it possible to you, you know, later this, this afternoon, you know, you post, so glad I went to church. And tell, maybe tell them why, I don't know, but just something. I just think that's all that happened to Zacchaeus, and look what it did for him. And I think maybe that's all you and I would, I mean, it's a place to start, I should, I should say, a place for you and I to start. We just sort of work faith into the conversation. You know, we're not challenging anybody. We're not, you know, we're not being obnoxious. This is just, I watch football. I go to mass. I ride a bicycle. You know, that sort of stuff. Maybe that's a place to start. Over time, perhaps, hopefully, you know, going to mass is more important than, you know, than watching a football game. And maybe you can convey that in some way. That would be really nice. You did notice that Zacchaeus was changed when he met Jesus. I mean, you know, the guy's crazy rich, as we talked about, as you may know from before, tax collectors often got their wealth through dishonest means. So Zacchaeus, probably not a really great guy, but he just seeing Jesus, that one moment of encounter changes his whole life. We believe that that happens. That still happens. People who encounter the Lord change for the better. They get a chance to walk into that abundant life that Jesus asks. That's what, we're, that's what you're offering. And isn't that what we would want to offer? You know, these are our friends, our neighbors, people we care about. Don't we want to share this with them? So it's a small thing, perhaps. But let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can find small ways to be evangelist. Not necessarily, you know, in a real, you know, maybe an outgoing way, but maybe in just small ways. But I bet those small ways will make a difference.